We've got a whole bunch of boxes to actually get reviews done for. But today's one is the X96 Mini, which is boasting the brand new Amlogic S905W processor, which you guys have been asking me to do reviews for. So let's get straight to it and let's get this review done. So this is the X96 Mini. They've sent us a one gigabyte of RAM version. You can get a two gigabyte one. Now this is a tiny, tiny little thing. As you can see, oh, it's so small. But it feels really well made as well. You know, it's solid plastic. Look, it fits in the palm of my hand just like that. It feels actually really high quality, actually. I mean, this thing's only 20 quid. I mean, that's nothing really for these things. And it's running this Amlogic Asana 5W, which is the latest processor. And of course, that comes with Nugget. Now, on Nougat, should I say, it comes with a standard IR remote to be expected. And it comes obviously with HDMI cable as well. Now, interestingly, it comes with this little like wall mount. Because it's so small, you could probably mount it somewhere, you know, quite far away from you, or just deep inside the TV cabinet, something like that. Now, the most interesting thing is it comes with this IR extension. And I want to talk about this just for a second. So let's move on to this. So really, what I wanted to show you guys, just quickly, um, but this comes with an IR extension. So this thing here. Now the thing's so small, that you could probably mount it right at the back of your TV or something like that. And you can use what this mount point as well. Now it sort of sits like that, and then it's got a sticky pad. Well, no, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a Velcro pad, actually. Uh, so it comes off. Um, so you can stick that anywhere you want, obviously, and then you can remove it when you like. Um, so you could probably put that behind the back of your TV. The, the only thing I've got about this is that when you mount it, you have to mount it like that. Now on the top here, we've got a HDMI cable, obviously, input. And so your HDMI cable is sort of going to have to go in the top like that. Now if it was me... I'd have much preferred it so the design would have had the HDMI cable putting in the in here, sort of. So I would have flipped this around and had it sitting the other way. They haven't done it that way, so your HDMI cable is having to go in this way. So wherever it's sat, it's going to have to go like that. I would have had it going that way, so coming out, but there we go. So, quickly moving on just to this um, IR remote thing. So it's actually got on the front of here an IR sensor, just in here which is fine, every, every TV box has got one of those. And this one comes with this extension. So, like I said, with the whole idea of tucking it away in the cabinet somewhere, then you can plug this into the back of the actual device, fire it somewhere in the back if you want to, and then you're gonna have this little thing just sat here. Maybe get a bit of uh, double-sided sticky tape even, and just have it sat there. And away you go. Now the only problem is with that is they come with these crappy remotes, these awful IR things. Um, I can't even find where it is. Hang on. Oh, there it is. So one of these things. Now, the idea behind this is great. It's fantastic. I've not seen it done before actually on a TV box. This IR remote extension. It's quite nifty. It's just a shame they have to put one of these bleeding things in with it because they're just not very good at all. And if it was a much better IR remote, then great, fantastic. The idea would get me a thought. I'd be, oh, brilliant, thumbs up all the way. But if you've ever used one of these uh, for any length of time, they are so frustrating. They are limited with the amount of um, distance you can actually use them. So I'm, you'd have to sit pretty close. This is probably quite sensitive, I'd imagine. Although it does look like it's just a standard, you know, IR, you know, um, receiver inside. So I'd imagine it's just, you know, just the same. You've got obviously got the IR receiver on the box as well, so you're getting two IR receivers, but uh, only if they put a better remote in. Maybe charge just a little bit more. I mean, this box is 20 quid for the one gigabyte RAM version, uh, 26 pounds for the two gigabytes, so you know it's cheap. But only if, if they just put the price up just a little bit and put in a better remote, I think this would have been a, such a good idea. It would have been great. Anyway, there we go. Uh, let's move on to the next part of the review now. The Amlogic s 905 w is Amlogic's latest processor release. Now, is it any different to the s 905 x s 905 
No, I don't think so. The only difference I can see is that it supports 4K at 30 frames a second rather than 60 frames a second as we've seen on the S905X. So I think this is just Amlogic's way of re-releasing another processor. Same processor, slightly different name, but they are clearly targeting the Rockchip 3229, which has kind of beaten Amlogic on the lower end over the last well, couple of months. Now, is this just a, a market ploy to sell more? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Really, time will tell whether we actually, you know, think this is a good processor or not, because I'm not entirely sure. It's only got HDMI 1.4, so definitely this is targeted at people that don't really have 4K TVs, which is fine. I don't have a 4K TV, so it doesn't really matter to me. I'm not after the ultra crisp clear pictures because it, it's matterless to me. As long as I can see what's going on, on the screen, you know, I'm not absolutely fussed. But again, uh, I'm logic just up to marketing tricks, trying to get you to buy a brand new box when you don't really need one. Yeah, possibly, but we'll sh we shall see. You can make up your own mind on that, obviously, as long as you guys understand that this process is basically the same as the S905X. S905, just tweaked a bit so you don't get actually the same sort of features that you would on the S905X. Obviously, you've got Nougat, which is great, but, you know, that's just, again, another marketing trick. Do you need Nougat over Marshmallow? No, not at all. So, you guys can make up your own mind on that part. So welcome to the launcher home screen of the X96 Mini. Now this is a launcher we've seen plenty of times before. A couple of weeks ago Scott did a review of the T95Z and it's got the exact same launcher. It's absolutely fine, there's nothing wrong with it. It does its job and it, you know, categorizes everything just fine. Now if we go into settings we can see that this is the Nougat setting screen so it's totally different to maybe what you're used to and does the job you can easily find everything you need about like applications what what's installed etc and yeah it's absolutely fine uh, that's new guys really good it's absolutely fine and this is probably one of the cheapest new guy boxes you're probably ever going to find anywhere with an analogic chipset at least anyway now i mean if we go into apps we can see all our applications and they're all nicely laid out now the launcher etc i'm not really interested in you know it's we've seen this before i've seen better launches but i'm quite happy for a cheap box like this to have something like this on it the t95z is a much more expensive box than it does have it on it but you know there we go that's just the way it is so let's test out a few things now i want to show you cody so let's load up cody and let's see how well it to say how well the application runs really i mean i've had it on before and then, you know as you can see it's it runs through everything absolutely fine we can go and check everything out and yeah it's no problem now i want to i've played a few youtube clips of hd tests and stuff like that i want to show you those now just in a quick montage and you can determine whether it's any good or not i mean to me it's all right again this is limited to the hdmi 1.4 so we can't actually experience full 4k but i don't have a 4k tv i just have a regular 1080p one so here we go and i'm going to show you that right now So those videos play pretty smoothly. So next up is the pretty boring part, which is the bench testing. Some of you guys out there though will be interested in seeing what it scores. It scores 25,000, I mean that's not amazing, but meh, what can we expect for the price of this box? I mean I, I would have expected a little bit more, but there we go, that's what it is. So next up is games, this is Asphalt 8, now actually it's running pretty well. Now that's surprising considering it had a well pretty low uh, anti 2 bench score so not bad. Next up we're going to just play a few montages of retro games and see how they run because in my experience yes none of 5 doesn't do too badly when running retro gaming. 
Now we've got a retro gaming build built for the LibreLex system and that can be booted, dual booted from certain um, devices like the MXQ Pro and stuff like that. And our gaming setup, our build built by Scott Murray can actually be installed onto that. And we find, you know, the S905 handles retro gaming pretty well. So on Android, I expect it to be even better. So I've made a bit of a mistake. Uh, the X96 doesn't include joypad drivers. I've tried this one. I've tried this one. And although that, that, well, that one's not an official Xbox 360 controller, that one's just a generic one. That one lights up at least, but it doesn't do anything. This one doesn't even light up, um, which is a shame. It's actually really surprising. Nowadays, most TV boxes come with those joypad drivers, and this just doesn't, especially for new cars as well. It's a, it's a mystery. Maybe they'll change things. I mean, this is a brand new box. So maybe someone's forgotten to do it, I don't know. Hopefully in time they can include that in their firmware, in a firmware fix or something like that. We were trying to install this classic boy and it will, and I can, I'd imagine it will work and it will run those games. There's no point in me showing you because I can't actually control them properly. Obviously I showed you Asphalt 8 and that's absolutely fine because we, te we tend just to quickly test them just to see how they work and we just use these remotes, these controllers and you know it's you know because it's designed for touchscreen you see so we just use the pointer i never thought that it wouldn't include the drivers that's the thing so i never really tested it to see if it would work with asphalt 8 because that i think that works with xbox 360 controllers so obviously you can put it in any controller but you know just just you know to do it quickly i just thought i'd just use that i tend to do that anyway and then i can move on to the retro game and then plug in a proper controller um, no, no, no joypad drivers at all installed on this um, on this device, which is a shame, and it's an actual surprise as well. So hopefully they can fix that at some point, and we can test the game and on this properly. So with that in mind, I think that brings us to the end of this review. The box overall is actually not bad, especially for the price. Just a shame about those joypad drivers. Big issue for me because I do like to play my games, but there we go. It might not be an issue for you. Now overall, don't expect amazing playback for video quality and stuff like that. I mean 4K is achievable, but you're only going to be limited to 30 frames a second. Most of you guys out there with full expensive 4K systems probably won't want to buy a cheap box anyway. You're probably going to be going for a higher end system. So it's this is Matt Lush really for you, but you guys just maybe want a cheap one for the spare bedroom. Or you've maybe just got, you know, a TV like me, a 1080p one. This will do just fine and you'll play the video files you know just fine as well and if you're on a budget it's perfect for that now i mentioned at the start of the video about the actual mounting points so i would have much preferred if you were mounting it behind your tv to all the cables come under rather than above now unfortunately the design of where the actual mount holes are it's a good idea by the way but it's just the design of it doesn't allow for that because if you put it in it will just fall out um, so you have to have it the way so HDMI cable comes from above so it puts a bit of strain on the cables which is a shame so I thought well let's see if we can take the casing apart and let's rearrange it a bit just you know flip it over now unfortunately the design of the case doesn't allow you to do that it doesn't clip in properly it clips in kind of but you know not not properly It'll probably just fall apart at some point so it's, well, it's a bit of a shame really but there we go that's just the way it is maybe Maybe they can watch this video, maybe rethink it, maybe. Maybe maybe you disagree with me entirely, maybe it should come from above. But there we go, you can tell me in the comment section below if you don't agree with me on that point. So, yeah, thanks for watching guys, this has been an interesting video I think. Now, don't forget, the MSQ Project has got a brand new website. So if you want to go and check that out, that's mxqproject.com. Don't forget to subscribe as well to our channel. And uh, don't forget to hit the little uh, um, bell icon just to make sure you guys keep updated with all our new videos. And we are also still running that TX2 competition. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers now, so if you want to get involved, you still can. And we'll announce the winner when we hit that 2,000 subscribers. Not long to go now, guys. Thanks for watching, and we shall see you in the next one.